Hey everybody, um, this is Mandy Nohost from Instructional Technology. Um, we just wanted to send out um, some updates um, that we've been working on over the last um, few days. Um, last week, today is just Wednesday. So um, let's start with website updates. Um, and by the way, these will be for both teachers and parents. Um, there is a, a a very specific video parents that I will show you here in just a little bit about online resources. So stay tuned for that for just a moment. But let's check out our website updates. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the for teachers side. Um, so we've really pushed out those communication tools. Um, if you are using Class Dojo, please make sure to come here because we have both video and text instructions on getting started with that. So um, that's one thing we can show you. Um, another one has been about student password resets. And so we have included a form here that teachers you can fill out. We've also included it on the parent site as well. So um, just fill this out. It'll alert our team and what happens is our team will reset that password. It will be temporary. Um, so your student, your child will then have to make up their own new password. So that is a recent addition to our teacher sites. Um, when we are accessing ECISD um, technology for students, this is imperative. So when I just talked about the student password reset, just know my kinder through fourth parents, well, pre-K through fourth parents, that their student ID number is their username, their email, and their password. So if you have a, a pre-K through fourth student, before you submit that, um, before you submit that reset form, please try their ID number again. One other addition that we have made, so we've had a lot of calls, both parent and teacher wise, about getting into Pearson EasyBridge. Um, so for my, my student on my student login, make sure that that last initial is capitalized for students to be able to get in there. The best way now is to go through ClassLink. So on our teacher side, we have the ClassLink instructions in English. Parents, we have ClassLink in both English and Spanish. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Um, remember that you cannot go through ClassLink to get onto iStation. iStation has to be installed on your home device, whether it's your tablet, um, or a Chromebook or a laptop. So we have the instructions to um, download that. Um, we still have all of our learning tools here. We're, we're sticking pretty close to, um, we feel it's easiest to either use Google Classroom or Seesaw, um, but we do have some other learning tools for those of you who are ready to move on. We also have had a lot of questions about recording our lessons. Right now, I am using Screencastify. Um, it, it, there is a five minute limit per video. It is free, but you only have five minutes to record. Um, so, re I mean, research shows anyway that you don't need to have a very long, drawn out video, uh, unlike what I'm doing today. But for your students, you need to keep that recorded instruction short and sweet. So, this might be really fantastic for you. Loom is also another. Um, screen recording um, tool. Remember that you have PowerPoint that you can also record on and don't hesitate to use your um, camera app on your phone and then just upload it to Seesaw or Google Classroom. Again, we have included some resources from people that we have been following and that have taught us on our instructional education journey. So um, check that out. Um, our professional learning, we did have some courses last week. And so what we're doing is we're making sure that those videos are all have all been placed on our YouTube. So at this point in time, we do not have a schedule for online learning teachers. OK, we just have please go to our YouTube channel, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I want to click there so it takes us subscribe to that YouTube channel um, because we have um, videos to help you out. 
we are currently trying to organize it so that it is easier for you to um, to find what you need. But um, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, keep watch of the cool things that we're trying to help teach you. We also are sharing our information on Twitter and Facebook, so be sure to follow us on those platforms as well. Um, the FAQs. So we have those. Remember just to click the links and it will open up more information um, for you. Um, teachers um, and students that don't have internet ac access at home, if you have um, a device, you can come to our parking lots and you can sit in the parking lot with that. Um, you just need to check your email um, or get with your teacher for that password. Uh, something new added to our page today is the Techie Tribe remote learning update. So teachers, this is what we have been sending you every afternoon um, after our full day of getting phone calls um, and troubleshooting the things, all the things. And so we are placing that here as well. So um, check your email, please, please. This is not an in lieu of or an absence of, but check your email. Uh, but just know that our remote learning updates will be posted here. Okay, my parents, on your side of our website, um, we are adding um, video videos to help walk you through each of these resources and how you should log on. I know the biggest struggle for you parents has been I can't get into my kids' class, uh, Google Classroom, the class code isn't working. And so I just feel like I need to reiterate the point of making sure that you were logged out of your personal account. Um, and I know that can be kind of tricky with passwords being remembered, but check out our videos um, and it will show you how to kind of clear that out to help you. Um, we also have, remember our offline and online ideas. I know that you have been given information from your students' teachers, so please, if that's what you're supposed that's what you're supposed to be following, we just have some other things here as well. Remember that we have your FAQs here. Um, so if you have forgotten that password, then there is a there is a reset form for that. Um, but just know that your students, um, like your pre-K four students, should use their ID number ID number. If you click on the password reset at the very bottom of this, it also takes you to that form. And so with our team of four, we are trying to stay on top of this and check out your um, check out the concerns that you that you are having. All right, I'm back at our YouTube channel. Um, just want to point out a few things that we um, have recorded today. And I say we as a group. Um, so logging in with your MacBook. If you have a MacBook at home and ClassLink, we have that video for you um, using a Windows device um, and that and getting into ClassLink is good. And then the other one is logging into Google Classroom on a computer or laptop. So those are those are three new videos as of today that have been added to our YouTube channel. Um, Amanda Weber is working on getting a video recorded for your tablet. So if you're logging into a tablet to get into Google Classroom, she is currently working on that. So stay tuned for more for more information there. OK, the next thing I want to talk about is going to be aimed at the at HMH um, for parents. And so I'm just going to bring up my Google Drive for a second and let you know, um, parents, that you've probably seen um, some lesson plans from the school district or from your student's teacher. Um, however you're seeing the lesson plans, um, I'm going to pull up elementary and I'm going to pull up second grade. So here I'm going to go to ELARB because HMH is related to English language arts. And um, I see that beginning on Monday, here was the lesson that I was supposed to do with my kiddos at home. Um, I can see that I have word work, phonics, and I'm choosing to do online versions. So me as a parent, if I come click on this spelling list, I'm getting an access denied form or a page. 
Fear not, our um, ELAR department is understanding of this and they know this. So this is where I'm going to step in and try to um, help out with that information. I do want to show you that their moose sound, um, when this was created, all of the links were working. Um, however, things just happen. I don't know what the things are, but you might be getting some messages about access being denied. And so let's try to calm your fears of this. And so I'm going to show you what the student perspective, let me bring over this screen. And so um, when I'm logging into, I'm going to move my face over here. Okay. So going into HMH, um, your students have been told to go through Clever. You've probably been told, log your students in through Clever. So let's walk through that. I'm on my ECISD homepage. I can click on Parents and Students up here at the top. And then over here under Important Links on the right-hand side, you see Class Link. So you'll just click there. And what happens is the student will get this information to click to sign in. And then they're going to be asked to sign in. Okay, so I finally have gotten signed in. I was trying to protect some students' rights um, so you wouldn't see their, their ID number. So, I'm, I've logged in with my ID number and my password. So remember my pre-K-4 students, you're using your ID number, uh, my fifth and up, whatever password that you created. So this is what a student dashboard can look like. I'm not saying they're all exactly going to look like this, but this is what it can look like. So our assignment has been through HMH Ed. So I'm going to click on this little guy over here. Of course, it'll say loading application. Now, you might have this open up if depending on which browser window you're in. So I would just click don't ask me again and then continue to the website. You might have to find the state um, the first time that you're doing this. So just search for Texas and then search for your school district. So Ector County Independent School District. Make sure it's Ector County and then you'll click next. And this is where it's going to ask for the student's um, username and password. And so I'm going to just open up, um, I'm going to go back to our website really quick and show you where this becomes important. So for parents, my class, this login information, so my ed or ed, HMH ed. So it's going to be the ECISD and student ID number. And then their password is the student ID number. Okay, so we're getting signed in at this moment. All right, and so I can see my student. This is what my student is seeing right now. Now, remember, when I clicked on the link, it told me, you know, this link is access denied or whatever. So here is one way that you can search for things, okay? Um, so in those lesson plans, there is a possibility that uh, there is that your teacher, your teachers have said, okay, it's time to grow my pal module eight. So I could come down here and I could search within module eight. I'm going to say always allow for my pop-ups so that it'll automatically pop up into a new window. It says not today. There we go. All right. Don't worry about those errors. I just clicked it too many times. Okay, so I'm opening to module eight. Now, as the as the student, remember, this is what students can see. There is a contents window over here on the left upper hand corner that they can click and go to any, um, they can go to any of the, the titles. Think of this as your table of contents in a book. So within module eight or chapter eight or unit eight, whatever you want to call it, here are all of the, the things within that module. So if we're supposed to read Butterfly Garden today, I can even click on Butterfly Garden and I can go straight there. So think that's one way to think of your table of contents. 
Another cool thing is the audio feature. So if you have a student that is not reading yet or it has to be read to um, to fit their accommodations, you can play audio up here on the right hand side. <laughs> Let's try again. Of course, it's not working. So there is that feature. I promise it works. Um, there is a note place, um, a notes section that you can also um, have your students take notes if they need to. And if you click on more, um, this is where you can you have just a few features as the student. OK, so that's one way to get through the modules if you can't click on the um, on the lesson plan. The other thing, um, I'm just going to kind of move this over, is we were supposed to, to listen to the moose sound video. Well, that link didn't work. So one way we can combat this is underneath the modules, you can scroll down to find learning cards. This is where these videos came. So you see there's four pages. Um, I already know that I scrolled through all of them. I found moose. I was looking for moose. So the the ELR coordinators um, and the instructional coaches that have been working on this did label it with the animal, mammal, whatever you want to say um, that they need to go to. So I can come through learning cards to find moose and then I can open that up and play the video from there. So it practices that sound blend um, that they need to do. So um, well, let me just move this down here. So like I said, the moose sound wasn't popping up. Um, so look at learning cards um, through your student's platform. The spelling list also had an access denied link, but just look up here. Um, we have some instruction that the dictation sentences, so these 18 words are their spelling words for the, for the week or their spelling list. Also, the high frequency word list, if that doesn't pop up, and I think it is um, access denied as well, but you have the high frequency words up here. So that look between both the online option and the no tech option because th this should be this should mirror one another. And so if you can't get into one thing, it's OK. Just open or just look at the no tech option um, and you should be able to um, to get some information. All right, another thing to point out, let me come back to HMH's page here. Let me come back to Discover. Okay, so iRead is a game-based option that your kids can play. Um, I don't believe this has been assigned by any teachers yet, but Amy Cotton, our elementary ELR coordinator, said iRead is an, a game that's available for students to play. So um, parents, you might want to check that out. Um, if you need some extra activities online. All right, so that was it from the student side. Um, I'm going to drag a teacher side in. And so teachers, I did the same thing here. I, um, I went to our homepage on ECISD. I clicked on um, staff links. And then I, too, went through cl uh, class link for you. Um, so when you click on class link, um, again, it will ask you to um, you just click on the green button first dot last name and then your usual password and your um, your dashboard will show up as well. And so teachers, when you click on HMH, I just want to to make you aware um, it might as well do the same thing about opening an extension so just do don't ask me again and continue to the website and then use your sign in information so this the, the teacher dashboard is a lot more um busy so let's say we're working on module eight right now okay so we are let's just we're going to fast forward to week two right so week two here's lesson six so I'm going to view resources for that. And let's say we're going to get started with a bumpy ride. So I'm going to open that window here. 
One thing that the ELR department wanted to make really clear is that you have some features that are the same. So contents over here, just think you have your table of contents, just like you have your in-person touchable uh, teacher's edition. You also have this online. You also have the option to play the audio. Uh, audio. You can review it. But the teachers, the thing I want you to look at is the more feature over here. So you can assign this straight to your Google Classroom. So I know a lot of you are on Google Classroom right now. So you can assign this to your Google Classroom. And what will happen is it will uh, open to all of the classes that you have. And so you would just click on that. You would choose an action with it, you know, create your assignment and you can go from there. So that feature is also available. And then remember that you can assign it to students through Pearson, uh, I mean, through Pearson, through HMH, I'm so sorry. And this is looking at the student. So then the students could see what has been assigned to them and they could click start and go from there. So be sure teachers to check out those features. All right, my friends, we're getting to the end of the updates that I have so far for today. Um, so just remember um, that parents, if you have issues, get in touch with your teacher so they can communicate. If it's a curriculum and instruction thing, they have an instructional um, coach on their campus that is the curriculum and instruction expert. So have conversations with them. Um, that would be fantastic. If um, teachers, if you are having trouble with your online programs um, and CNI documents, I would most likely contact your instructional coach first um, and then get in touch. So try that sh troubleshooting um, before you get in touch with us. Um, Bonnie Downey is our online programs administrator. You can only imagine the kind of workload he has going on right now. So please see if you can troubleshoot first with your instructional coach um, about some things that CNI has shared with them. Um, and then of course, we are here to help. Um, we can reset passwords. Just check out our, um, check out our, our, I just lost my words, <laughs> our website um, and go from there. You can see that I even, we even have a bit.ly, so parents, if you want to pause the video and type this and then hit a bookmark or save it or even drag it to your bookmarks up here, that way you can just go click right back to it. That would be fantastic. Um, but I'm going to close out for today. If you have any questions, um, get a, a hold of your teachers. Check out our website for resources. Check out our YouTube for how-to videos. Um, and don't forget to breathe. We are all doing the best that we can. So anyway, with that, you guys have a wonderful afternoon. Happy Wednesday.